Okay, some examples of good socialization or problems with lack of socialization. I've got some notes here because this is the third time I've tried to shoot this video and I keep forgetting stuff. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> my pal Gary bought a German Shepherd puppy last year and um, hadn't had a puppy. In fact, because his last dog he'd bought is a, an adult dog, so he hadn't had a puppy and uh, it came round and we did tons and tons of classical conditioning around this dog. So we took Eva to the park and every time she did an interaction with another dog it was followed by some of Eva's breakfast. Every time she did an interaction with um, a person it was followed by some of her breakfast or dinner. Now the food came from Gary, okay, so the dog is as we talked about in the last video, she was linking the, making an association between people and dogs in the environment with food, but the food came from uh, Gary, and we're also starting to train her at that point as well, that every time an interaction happens with a person, if you come back towards me, that gets reinforced. So we're getting classical condition as well as some training going on at the same time. So Eva's about seven or eight months old, and she has involved in an altercation, which was neither Gary nor Eva's fault with, um, a clown, a total idiot with um, a big dog and Eva was traumatised by it. So what happened was very quickly afterward, I mean it, if it wasn't the next day, the, the next hour, it was the next day, Eva started having interactions with other dogs and started becoming a little bit growly because of this incident. So Gary brought her round within a day or so of it happening and we started doing some more work and we basically did the work we did more of the work with, with Eva as a puppy, okay, that we did as, when she was a puppy. So more classical conditioning around dogs. Because we did all that back catalogue of really, really cool stuff around other dogs, Eva bounced back from it really quickly. It took, it took days of work. I mean, it, it was a couple of days. Gary just boom, boom, boom. Every time Eva saw another dog, she get fed and that got her back over and back on track to where she was and to this day hasn't had an issue with other dogs. That's only capable of because of all the work we did with her as a puppy. If we hadn't done the work with her as a puppy, that one incident, that one relatively seriously traumatic incident um, with uh, the other dog, she might never have recovered from it fully or it could have taken weeks or months of work and I know because I've seen it so that's a really, really good example of why we do it, okay? I had a um, Malamute puppy, or a Malamute a couple of years ago, and she was between 15 and 18 months old, and she was starting to, uh, the couple would be walking her, standing and talking to people in the street because she was a beautiful dog, and she would now start staring at them and then maybe lunging, and she'd bitten a couple of people. Now, when I asked them about how much socialization they had given, they told me that they had socialized her intensively because they dread um, to, that they needed to socialise her when she was up until she was 16 weeks old. What they had done was they had taken her to the park, really nice park locally to where they stayed, and because she looks like a teddy bear, hundreds of people in the space of an afternoon or two afternoons would come up and try and pet her. They would crowd round her, loads and loads of people would pet her and crowd round her, so she's not having a good time when this is happening. So what the couple had inadvertently done was inoculate her against people. And she now, had, they effectively made her claustrophobic, this dog. So the dog needs to be having a good time. It needs to be positive experiences or don't do it at all. And the, reason, the way we can do positive experiences is by using food, okay? Because if you're giving your dog a bad experience, then that's worse than actually doing nothing. And it's relatively easy to do, as I've, I've explained, to you, using food. Okay, uh, another dog, another good example. Um, Nicola phoned me last year. She has Poppy, uh, who's 14 months old or so now, 15 months old, uh, who's a Rottweiler. And she phoned me up and said, um, not had a puppy before and what do I need to do? So we booked an appointment for the first day Poppy was able to go out, outside with her feet on the ground. I'd given Nicola some advice in the meantime and she did tons of work between 8 and 12 weeks or 10 and 12 weeks between the time when she phoned me until I first met her taking Poppy out into the environment and um, uh, carrying her or put her and she actually made a really nice wee push chair with a basket which was really cool and took Poppy down busy streets and didn't let people pet her 
Nicola just fed her around people and that was really cool. So when we bought Poppy out of the car, I put her on a long lead, 20 foot lead, and I stood next to her and we stood 25 metres or so, 25 yards back from uh, within the car park, away from the main entrance of the park. Lots of people, dogs, mums with push chairs, kids in scooters and bikes. And we waited until Poppy was ready to go. So she sat there for about 10 or 15 minutes, just watching, sussing things out, and then decided that it was safe enough for her to proceed. Now, the worst thing that we could have done there was drag her and take her in there by setting her up that, yeah, it's your, it's your choice. What do you want to do? And then being ready to reinforce that when she went on and then doing loads of classical conditioning around um, all this stuff. Poppy's now this phenomenal dog, this super, super, super dog. She's an absolute joy to work with. And I did some more work with her recently and it was kind of distance stuff. And uh, Nicola's given me feedback saying that it's going really well, which is absolutely fantastic. And that happens because we built a good foundation. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples of what I see, what I see when I take, when, I, when I'm working uh, at the park with other people and their puppies. Putting a puppy on a flexi lead because the dog, they want the dog getting exercise, um, but they don't have enough confidence to let the dog off the lead fully. So a long line is the answer to that, not a flexi lead. The long line teaches your dog to be off lead because we can keep slack on it. A flexi lead is spring loaded, so as soon as you take the flexi lead off, the dog now knows he's not attached to you. I had a guy in the park last week, I saw him coming in with a Labrador puppy. People come up and said hello, a couple of dogs. The puppy tries to pull back to get away, to increase distance because he doesn't feel safe enough. He clips, the or clicks the, uh, the extending lead shut and the puppy now can't get away. Okay, so puppy, puppy wants more space to get away from the scary people coming in just so that he can suss it out a little bit and he's now prevented from doing that and then forced into an interaction which he doesn't want to he doesn't want to be in. Really, really terrible lead handling. Um, I see it all the time with puppies. The puppy tries to move away and the person immediately drags the, back, the, the dog back in to say hello um, or to stand next to them. Let him go, just go, let him go. You know, give him some space and let him suss it out. That's what he wants. And by giving him the ability or giving her the ability to control the space that he has from people, you know, um, think about it yourself. If you're walking down the street and a stranger comes up to you and wants to hug you, you're, what are you doing? You know, so you've got that ability to put your hand up and move back. What are you doing? Get away from me. Now imagine that person, that stranger, is a giant of a different species. And you're backing up this massive person or this massive creature. And you've got no ability to get away from it. It would scare you, okay? And if that happened enough times, you would now start screaming and shouting at the this stranger to get away from you. And this is what can happen um, if we don't allow this, okay? Picking up your puppy and allow people to pet them, don't do that either, okay? It's a, it's a terrible, terrible idea, picking your puppy up. Toy breeds get it a lot. Pick the puppy up, the person comes in and says hello, dog's got nowhere to go, and will start lunging and uh, start growling initially, and they then get told off for growling, so they now start snapping. And this is now how we get yappy dogs, okay? So I've had um, two tiny dogs recently, and dozens of toy and small dog breeds, mainly the toy dogs, you don't get it so much with terriers, but lots of the toy dog breeds, the small ones, um, it's because people pick them up. And people pick them up because they're scared something's going to happen. Don't pet a puppy when it's in your arms, unless the puppy looks ecstatic to see you and the whole body's shaking and the tail's going and the dog looks really, really, really happy. Um, so these are just some examples of good handling or good experiences I've had and bad experiences. And it's to give you some ideas of stuff to think about. Any questions, again, guys, um, stick this in. The sun's coming out. Uh, this is what summers are like in Scotland. It's like this all the time, all the time. From April until October, this is the weather that we get. So, any questions, stick them in the fields below, and we can have a chat. And thanks for watching again.